So I wanted to be sure to try to explain what is a clinical diagnosis. A lot of the movement disorders that we deal with and that our patients have to deal with are clinical diagnoses. This means that there's no one gold standard test. There's no blood test, there's no scan, there's no nice computer to spit out a label, there's no cutoff point. The way that we figure this out is to listen hard to the patient and family's experiences, what kind of symptoms and how things have happened over time, and take a careful look at their exam and their overall uh, picture, and then compare that to the possible diagnosis labels and make our best label that we can that fits the, the closest with the person. Often it's not super close or completely 100% overlap. You go out and read about your new label and you see things that sound very familiar to your own experience and you see things that don't sound so familiar. Um, the other thing about clinical diagnoses that I think can be frustrating for people is that they can change over time. Remember, we figured out your clinical diagnosis by listening to your experience and how things happened over time, taking a hard look at your exam. Your experience can change. Your symptoms could evolve. You could develop new symptoms. From checking out your exam every year or so, you might see new symptoms or old symptoms fading away. And so I personally am always waiting for the other shoe to drop when I have a clinical diagnosis. I'm always questioning, is this still the right label, the right fit for this patient? Uh, or do we need to press for thinking about a different label? The reason I care is because we use these clinical diagnoses to help people understand what their expectations are, what might happen to them in the future, and to help make the smartest possible choices about treatment and interventions they can do as well as possible in the long run. It seems like this shouldn't be so hard. Uh, we have a lot of guidelines and a lot of patient and family experience, but when it comes down to it, it can be really difficult, especially when people don't just walk out of the textbook of their movement disorder. A couple of very, very big, very experienced movement disorder centers did a study of comparing people's clinical diagnosis to what their final diagnosis on autopsy was looking right at the brain. That's the real gold standard is getting your hands on your brain, but that's not that helpful when you're still with us. So if you get the brain, then compare that to what the clinical diagnosis was, a really solid movement disorder center has about an 80-85% correct rate where the brain and the clinical diagnosis agree. That's pretty good. That means that there's still maybe 15-20% out there where things may change over time in the clinical diagnosis. I think the clinical diagnosis is a really important concept because often people have been on a search for their label for quite some time. They're frustrated, concerned, scared, and getting conflicting messages from different providers doesn't help. Two different people may come up with two different clinical diagnosis answers because remember you're just doing your best to pick which is the right label without that gold standard to help you. I think it's important both to consider seeing a movement disorder specialist because hopefully we've seen the most people with movement disorders and the most variants on the different labels can help explain our level of certainty. The other thing that's important is to acknowledge that there is that uncertainty, which can be really, really frustrating when you just want to get your label and move on. So being able to understand and explain a level of certainty and where the label decisions are coming from is something that a good movement disorder center can offer people.